Hello friends, this video on mathematical reasoning part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 6. Contrapositive, converse and inverse statement, please pay attention here, it is a little tricky. For example, if the statement is if p then q, for example, if sandwich then food, then the converse will be if q then p. Inverse will be if not p then not q. And contrapositive will be if not q then not p. So we will repeat once again. If the statement is p to q, right? Let's find the contrapositive first because contrapositive and statement, if statement is true, contrapositive will also be true. If the statement and contrapositive are same, and converse and inverse are the same. So to find contra, contra means you change direction. So in case of contra, we change direction, q. So instead of p to q, it becomes, let's suppose q to p. That's the memory tip I have. For contra, you change direction. So it becomes q to p. And it is positive. So that means this statement should, should be positive. So to make it positive, you may have to add negative sign here. So if you add both negative, then only the statement is true. Else the statement meaning changes. For example, if I say, if food is pizza, then do it, eat food. If Rohit eat food, food is pizza, both are different statement. But if I say, if Rohit had not eaten food and food is not pizza, they are same statement. So for contra, we have changed direction, but you wanted to make it positive only because it is this statement and statement are both same. Contra positive and statement is both same. So we have added negative negative here. So this became contra positive. For converse, since I have told for con, you have just change direction. So if you change direction, this becomes Q is to P. Correct? Correct? For inverse, for inverse, what you have to do? Inverse, you have to just invert it. If P, then Q, instead of that, we say if not P. So everything we derive from statement only. See, if on statement, if you want to find, if you have statement, you want to find contra positive, you change direction first. So it becomes Q and P. You want to make it positive only. So since you have changed the direction from P to Q to Q to P, you have to add this negative sign here. So this becomes contra positive. From statement you want to find converse, you just change direction. This becomes converse. From statement you want inverse. So in case of inverse, P and Q will be same, but you have to just write an invert here. This becomes inverse. This is a memory tip to find converse, inverse, and contrapositive from statement. Let me do once again. Statement, you have to find con. Con means you have to change direction. Con. Convert. So instead of P and Q, we have said Q to P. In case of inverse, no change in direction, just make it invert. So if it is p, you say p dash. If it is q, it says q dash. In case of contra positive, you have to both change in direction and you have to sign, add a negative sign also. Why? Because it is positive. Contra positive and statement are both same. So if you change the direction, the meaning of the statement changes. To retain the meaning, you have to add this negative sign both are present. This is how we got it. Also, if you see statement is true, then contra positive is true. So this statement and contra positive are both same. And if converse is true, then inverse is also logically true. So that means inverse and converse are also same. So if you see, if you have statement, if you find the contra positive, it is same actually. If you have converse, you find the contra, uh, if you find if you find the inverse, it is same. We'll explain more in detail. Let's understand these in details. Let's take this example, contra positive. So contra positive of a given statement, if you've seen, so we have, let's suppose, P to Q. Then to find contra positive, let's find contra first. This becomes Q to P. And we want to maintain the same logic, so we'll add negative negative here. So the contra positive of a given statement is, if not Q, then not P. This is the statement. Let's suppose the statement is, if the object is square, then this is polygon. If the object is triangle, it is a polygon. Let's suppose we have these two statements. Object is square is a polygon. Object is triangle is a polygon. To find the contra positive, so this is P and this is Q. So I write P here and Q here. So we have to say if not of Q, that is if object is not polygon, then not of Q, P, that is if not polygon, then not square. So if you see the contra positive is if not polygon, then not square. One more example. If not polygon, then not Q. So did you see what we have done? We know that for statement if P then Q, the contra positive is if not Q, then not P. So same thing we have done here. So here, if object is square, if object is triangle, these things comes under P. And then the object is polygon is Q. To 
find the contrapositive we told if the object is not polygon then the object is square if the object is not polygon then the object is triangle so again to repeat if then q if p then q is the statement then if not q and if not p this is the contrapositive now let's discuss converse so as we have seen if we have statement in this form p is to q for converse we have to just topple it so this becomes q is to if q then p here also if you see q then p so to find the converse you have to just topple the statement for example if n is divisible by 6 n is divisible by 3 this is a statement and this is true because i'll say for example 18 is divisible by 6 it is true statement then 18 is also divisible by 3 correct if it's suppose we take uh, something like uh, if this is true this is true right this is true we'll take one more statement if n is divisible by 9 n is also divisible by 3 we'll take same number 18 18 is divisible by 9 true then 18 is also divisible by 3 so both are true statements Find the converts will just say if number is divisible by 3, number is divisible by 6 also. So let's suppose take 3 number, number 3. 3 is divisible by 3, true, but 3 is not divisible by 6. So this is the false statement. Similarly, to find the contrapositive of, uh, to find the converts of this statement, it will say if the number is divisible by 3, this forms first, then it will say number is divisible by 9. We'll say number is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 9. Here also we'll take the number, let's suppose 6. So if the number is divisible by 3, it is divisible by 9. We'll take example 6. 6 by 3 is true, but 6 by 9 is not true. So this is also false. So both are false statements. So both are false statements actually. You see, thus we can see the statement is true, the converse is false. We'll see this one again. If P then Q is a statement, the converse is if Q then P is the converse statement. And also we observe that if statement is true, converse is false. If the statement is false, then converse will be. So in case of converse, we just top the statement and we get a value. And we have seen this. And why we have written so many things in n divided by 3, n by 6, n by 12, n by 15? Why? Because it is if then statement. It is not if and only if. So in case of if and then, these are so many sufficient conditions. So that's why I have added 4 here, just to give a clear picture. So there, there can be more sufficient conditions also. If it's n is divisible by 18, then also it is divisible by 83. If it is n is divisible by 21, then also it is divisible by 3. But just to make concept clear, I've added 4 here to make sure to show you that this is if then kind of statement. Correct? Right? Now we'll discuss inverse. The inverse of a given statement is for example, we have the statement if p then q, p then q. To find the inverse, just we write complement p, then complement q. Very simple. We'll take some example here. If the question is if n is divisible by 6, then n is divisible by 3 also. If you see the statement is true. For example, we take 18 again. 18 by 6 is true, and 3 by and 18 by 3 also true. This statement is true. We'll take a more example. If n is divisible by 9, n is also divisible by 3. Here also we'll take the same example. 18 by 9 is true, and 18 by 3 is also. So both the statements are true. Now we'll try to find the inverse of each of these statements. So first we'll try to find inverse of the statement 1. So inverse of the statement 1 is this one. It says that if instead of C, the P here is N is divisible by P, 6. So we say complement of P, this becomes N is not divisible by 6. Similarly for Q, it was N is divisible by 3. So it becomes N is not divisible by 3. Correct? So this became inverse. Now let me find whether this is true or false. So if n is not divisible by 6, n is not divisible by 3. This is the statement. So for example, let's take a uh, scenario 3. 3 is not divisible by 6, but 3 is divisible by 3. So this statement is false. We'll take more example. For this statement, we find the inverse. So you got this. Because here it is, if n is divisible by 9, it becomes n is not divisible by 9. Here it is n is divisible by 3, it becomes n is not divisible by 3. So n is not divisible by 9, n is not divisible by 3. We'll take an example 6. 6 is not divisible by 9, but 6 is divisible by 3. So this is also false. So what we have seen here, if P to Q is the statement, then complement of U to complement of Q is the inverse. And if P is true, the inverse is false. And if the statement is 
false the inverses that's what we have thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again